What's up guys, it's Grandmaster Max Lingworth here and this video is all about a new feature very recently brought to chess.com called chess.com leagues. Now in this video I'll be showing you not just about what the leagues are and how to join them but I'm also going to show you how to maximize your scores so that you can go up and up in the leagues. And also make sure to like this video if you enjoy it and consider subscribing if you are new to the channel. Now let's get into chess.com leagues. So how do we get into chess.com leagues? Well, going to my Google Chrome here, we can see the link here is chess.com uh, slash leagues, as I have highlighted the top. So make sure to go to that, and then you're going to see the leagues page I have here. Another way that also works is to go to your profile. So hover over your profile icon, the second one uh, on the bar to the left, and then right click on home. Uh, like doing here and then there'll be a button I mainly I don't have it because I'm already in a league but there'll be a button in this area so sort of on the right hand side of your screen which will say join league and then when you click that that will actually take you straight into the league as you can see I'm already in a league here and well therefore it shows my standing that I'm in first in the bronze league but what exactly does this mean well let's go back to the leagues page we had before basically the way it works is that when you enter a league You'll be put into a division of 50 players in for that week. So it's a seven day event. And basically you get points by getting what's called trophies. Now the way that you get trophies is basically by winning games on chess.com. So it's winning a bullet game or a blitz game or a rapid game or an arena game. And the thing is the score is weighted differently. So you get a different number of trophies depending on what time control you play. And of course the result. And you can see that here that with Bullet you get 3 points for a win, 1 trophy for a draw, 0 for a loss. For Blitz you get 9 trophies for a win, 3 for a draw, and 0 for a loss. And for Rapid you get 15 trophies for a win, 5 for a draw, and 0 for a loss. And then for Arena you get bonus trophies, which I believe is bonus trophies on top of what you would score for Rapid, Blitz, and Bullet games. Given that the Arena games after all will have to be Rapid or Blitz or Bullet time control as such. So on that base, we can already see from this scoring system that in general, Blitz is going to reward you the most for uh, for this time control because Bullet is a time control of less than three minutes. So even if let's say you're playing one minute games, then yeah, your maximum you could get would be a maximum of three points and the game could take a maximum of two minutes. Of course, I guess it's true in theory, you could try to play something like 30 second Bullet to get wins even more quickly. But 30 second is a little bit random and probably there'll be a lot of games where you might lose on time or fall for some quick checkmate unless you're super good at hyper bullet. So for most players, when playing Blitz is going to be the way to get the most points, specifically 3.0 and as 3 seconds with no increment. Because that way, basically it means you know 6 minutes maximum you're going to get 9 points if you win. And also in Blitz times it happens that you just win the game very quickly and you get the 9 points in a lot less than 6 minutes. I've actually played a lot of games I managed to get these full 9 points in 2 minutes or less. Same in special case, even 1 minute, which means I spent about as much time as I would have in a bullet game. But because my opponent played quickly and I played quickly and I was able to win, and I got the full 9 points. Whereas with Rapid, you're only really getting 6 more trophies for a win. But for Rapid, the game has to be 15 minutes or longer. So playing Rapid is not really very efficient in terms of getting the maximum trophies. Obviously, if you play lots of arenas, you'll probably get even more trophies that way as well. But one advantage of playing it just with Blitz is that you do have the ability to choose to some extent who you play against. So let's say, for example, if you play someone who is much, much lower rated than you, then you can sort of rematch them over and over again and have a long match where you're likely to score very well and can get a lot of points quickly that way as such. And that's something else you can apply at almost any rating level, not just as a Grandmaster. Now to advance to the next league, you can sort of see here that it depends what league you're in, where everybody starts out in the wood, Wooden League. Then the top 10 from the Wooden League in the 50-player pool that you're put in, then go to the Stone. Top 10 from that, then go to the Bronze. So all this is one week uh, league each time. So in Bronze, it's, which is why I'm currently in right now, since I've only been doing this for two to three weeks so far. Then the top five move on to the Silver League. <clears throat> top five Silver move on to the Crystal League. Top three Crystal move to the Elite. Top three, the Elite move to Champion, and the winner of the Champion League moves on to Legend League, which actually no one has got to Legend League yet, because this 
Leaksing has only been going for three to four weeks so far for the time I'm recording this. So the highest league that anyone is in at the moment is Silver, but by the time you're watching this video, there may well be some players who are within the Legend League where they're able to participate in special events with prizes. So it turns out now you can say you know, to your mum or dad saying, why do you spend so much time playing on chess.com? You can say, well, I'm getting into the Legend League and I can get paid for playing chess all the time online. Sounds good, right? So that's how the league works on a simple version. Now you can see if you click on the leaderboard, uh, which I'm just doing here, then you'll be able to look up the standings for different divisions where it automatically goes to bronze for the players who've scored the most points for the week. Or if you want to see the all-time record, you can click on all-time from, uh, from this button as well. But if I go back to this week, well, for example, you can then click on the different leagues like bronze and silver and see you know, what people's scores are, not just in your bracket, but in all of the brackets in general. So moving on, basically, that's how that works. You can even check how your friends are doing as well in the league if you want to. And then the next one is division. And division is really useful if you want to see how you're doing in your league, where, for example, you can see here that, well, this is for week 40. I'm in the bronze league and you can see at the moment I'm leading this league, having scored a total of 807 trophies. Uh, which we have sort of scoring system of nine points for the blitz, each blitz win and three points for each bullet win. And then see the standings here. And it turns how many points you're going to need or perhaps how many pro trophies you need to qualify. I found that if we go to the uh, the Wooden League and my standings there, you can see that I only need to score a 600 to finish in the top one. And number 10 only scored 60 uh, points or 60 trophies in total. So it means it's pretty easy to get to the next league just by playing a few games. Let's say if you play maybe a one hour blitz session or something and you're mostly playing much lower rate players, then yeah, it's very likely that you're going to get this, uh, get this fairly quickly. But obviously if you move up to each league, it gets a little bit more difficult each time because these people want to already qualified for the previous league. So you can see I scored 1,099 points in the Stone League, which was enough for first narrowly. And in top 10, well now is higher at 360. And then if we go to the league I'm in currently, if I click on Division for Bronze, well, we can see it already the fifth place that there's only five spots as such, so it's definitely more competitive. The number five is already at 429 points, which even with five days left is still higher than the number of points that the number 10 player needed in the, uh, in the Stone League before. I can see at the moment I'm leading with 807, but there's another player who is not that far behind me. So I'm probably going to need something like 2,000 points or more probably to finish in first. But if you just want to finish in the top five, then this can give you a bit of an idea of how many points or how many trophies you'll need to get in total in order to most likely qualify to the next phase. So I think the 50 players cho chosen are kind of at random as such. So yeah, obviously there's a bit of luck there, but if you play enough, then you are going to get the points as it were. Uh, and I mean, I find just playing a lot of games in one sitting works well, it just helps to get into the groove and all. I think that's pretty much all I want to say. Um, the only other point is you can leave a league if you want to. Obviously, I'm not going to do that. But if you say, I just can't stand these leagues, they're eating up all my time and taking all my life away, then the leave league button is there so you to be able to claim your life back. Now, for the rest of this video, I'm going to share two very quick games I played because obviously we've seen from the scoring system that the key to getting as many points as possible is to win as many games as we can, ideally win as many Blitz games as we can, because that's what's going to reward us the most points in general for the time that we spend. Of course, if you play arena events as well, that will help you boost your score up even more. But anyway, going to this, the second tip that I would offer is it's not just about winning as many games as possible, but of course trying to win each game as quickly as you can, because that's what's going to allow you to get a lot of points if you're able to win very quickly. So I'm going to show you the way in which I managed to win games pretty quickly against all of my opponents. Most of my games actually managed to win in 30 moves or less. And if I don't, it's probably because my opponent is playing very slowly and we're playing on until checkmate. So if you're playing someone even who, let's say, is much lower rated than you, but is, let's say, losing on time nearly every game, playing really slowly and always refusing to resign when they are losing, then they're probably not the best person to play to get as many points as possible. When I play someone like that, I usually try to find a different opponent. Or if I'm playing someone who, let's say, is somewhat high rated, or let's say way above average, then I'll again like do a different seek and try to find a different opponent. And because I'm much higher rated than virtually all my opponents, I do play it as unrated. It's one point to keep in mind that with these leagues, it does, 
you get the same number of points whether you play rated or whether you play unrated games at these time controls. So if you're playing low, low rate players but you don't want to risk your rating, then just play unrated and that will allow you to, to avoid that issue. Okay, so this first game I played against a player with a blitz rating of 1556. I was playing black. And the game went e4 and I played the alley can defense with knight to f6, which I find a system that can be quite tricky for players to deal with at this uh, level of let's say 1600 and below. The other system I play a lot in these fast games against players below 1600 is a Scandinavian with knight to f6, which actually ends up transposing into the game if they play to move knight to c3, which is in fact the move that I face most often in my games, even though at a high level d4 and knight f3 are more common. In these online blitz games, you're probably going to face knight c3 more often. But in the game, we reach out position via knight f6. Okay, e5 is the critical move, but a lot of players don't know that and they play knight c3 or some other harmless move in the surprise faced with a surprise. So I played d5, hitting the pawn. He exchanged and... And actually a lot of my opponents here make a very typical mistake of playing knight takes d5. And then after queen takes, you just get a very nice position with your queen very active in the center. Often you can play moves like knight c6, e5, bishop g4, long castles. And basically just by focusing everything on the d4 square, you get a very nice position out of the opening. And it's a line with which I've achieved quite a lot of quick wins in my games, where if you look up my profile on chess.com under my username Illingworth, you're going to find lots of games like that. But anyway, let's continue with how this one played out. My opponent played pawn to d4. I decided to trade the knights. Knight takes, pawn takes, g6. And naturally, I was playing my moves extremely quickly. Even though it was blitz, I was actually playing it at a bullet speed because, well, A, I kind of knew what moves I was going to play, but B... I'm going to get a lot more points for, let's say, each hour that I put in if I'm able to win all the games in with more than two minutes on my clock versus if I use nearly all the time I have. So I played C5. Just again, one thing I've found is an interesting pattern is that the games I win more quickly tend to be the ones where I create some pawn tension or some peace tension quite early, where that sort of frets and the fact I have to think, well, should I take the pawn or should I not take the pawn? It means that they sort of burn up more time and are just more likely to make mistakes at this level. So, for example, d takes c5 is a move I'd be very, very happy to see because white would be left with these double, these triple pawns even. I mean, it could even take a pawn back very quickly. So it's not even as so white as winning a pawn with this. My opponent played bishop g5, which is a reasonable move. Although after knight c6, he might wish that the bishop was back on e3 so that the pawn on d4 would be defended. But yeah, he played a move d5, and this is sort of an example again when you put a lot of pressure on their position with your pieces, attacking their pawns and their pieces, then it's often when they make big mistakes in these fast games. So after knight a5, if you're playing a lower rated opponent, say 1200 or below, they might easily think that, okay, the only idea of knight a5 was to defend against the attack from the d-pawn, and Mr. The knight move is also threatening the bishop. Now my opponent to his credit did see the bishop was under attack, but he missed it after bishop retreats that I can take on c3 and already win a pawn. And again, he just didn't realize that not only am I attack taking the pawn, but I'm also threatening the rook. And after queen d3 and bishop takes a1, I mean, he's going to be down an exchange and a pawn after rook takes a1. He surprised me a bit here, because I thought he was going to play on to the very end, but he just resigned at this point, probably just disgusted with himself. So if you can get your opponent to blunder in a way where they just feel like they have no hope, then they might give up more quickly, and that will allow you to win very fast, in this case, in just 12 moves. So that being said, let's move on to our next game. So my second game that I'm showing you here was one I actually played against a player rate 1926, so on the higher rate end of opponents I was facing in these chess.com leagues games. So I played a move knight c3, a bit of an unusual move order. Normally against this rating of opponents I play the London system. I find that works really well against players rate around 2,000 blitz or below because it's very easy to play the moves for white. But the other system I usually play is going for e4, knight c3, and something very aggressive at the start of the game. I find that the move I played f4 to Vienna Gambit, it's one of my main systems in these unrated blitz games for getting the league's trophies, because basically it's very hard for black to find the right move here if they haven't seen it before. And most of your opponents are either going to play e takes f4 and just let you get a much improved king's gambit where the black knight is forced back to g8. Or they're going to play to move d6 and just let you get again an improved king's gambit where black has gone for a very passive setup, shutting his bishop in. 
The move that black should play is to move d5, in case you're wondering, where it's very important to try to hit back in the center. But even then, after takes, takes, position is still reasonable for white. I normally play to move queen f3, and I find that in these lines with knight c3, d c3, you get a nice lead in development, and if black's not careful, they can run into some trouble. Though, of course, with best play, black should be okay here. But instead, black played the move d6, and after knight f3, I'm not really afraid of e takes f4, because I can still go d4, and I can still get the pawn back anyway. So he played a move knight c6, defending his pawn from attack. I pinned the knight with bishop to b5. A little bit of an unusual move, the setup with bishop to c4. d3 castles is a bit more common, where you play them to go for a pressure on f7 and an attack on the king. Again, it's a point I find that if you are able to attack the opponent's king quite early, that's normally going to be the way to win more quickly, because it blitz in particular. Players are usually not very good at defending against frets, so if you can make some very strong frets, it can really maximize your chances to win the game very quickly against your opponent. But because I was playing a 1926 player, I went bishop b5, a little bit more of a Roy Lopez style concept of pressuring the e-pawn. He took on d4. I played pawn d4, and I mean, at this point, after bishop d7 and bishop f4, you can already see it's only move 7, and already I have a strategically close to winning position, with the two pawns dominating the center here. I've got my bishops and knights all developed, and black's piece is just all very passive. He played bishop e7, castles, a6. And yeah, bishop c6 wasn't a very good move on my part, because I'm just helping him to free his pieces. I should just retreat the bishop instead, let's say bishop c4, or even let's say bishop d3. And I can always attack later on. You know, I can play moves like e5 and definitely bring the piece towards the king side for any castles. So that would have been a lot more effective, but I remember I played bishop c6 because I was thinking of playing e5 at this point, or after d5. But I realized that e5 wasn't actually that effective, and I just played more for a space advantage. So rook e1. Again, probably the best move is just to take on b5 and have the bishop pair advantage. But in the game, I was able to set a little bit of a trap without even really meaning to. I played the move a4, and if he just retreats the bishop back to d7, I think his position... Although it looks quite passive, he does have the bishop pair advantage and he doesn't have any <clears throat> real weaknesses in his position. So it should be quite okay for black. But instead he blundered with the move bishop to c4. So for a puzzle for you guys to reward you for your close attention, what is the move that I played here as white to achieve a winning position? So in the game I played the move pawn to b3. Granted there are ways to attack the bishop as well that also work. But b3 just wins the bishop completely, as the bishop has no safe place to go. And my opponent being very discouraged and realizing that you can't really play a piece down for nothing against a grandmaster, simply resigned at this point. So, with these two games, well, I just picked these two just out of a general sample. Obviously, I've played a lot more games again in the unrated blitz against these different players to get as many trophies as quickly as possible. I find when you get really good at it, you can get very high scores quite quickly. I think my record, if I remember, is something along the lines of getting 200 points in about 60 minutes, or might have been 52 minutes technically. So it is possible to get a lot of points very quickly just by basically following some of the tips that I shared with you, just to summarize what those tips were. Basically to make sure that you basically play blitz games, because the blitz games will give you the most points for each win you get, to try to play opponents who are much lower rated than you, and if you're playing someone who is sort of losing quite quickly against you and losing quite often, then obviously that will allow you to get a lot more points per minute that you are that you are playing as such. And finally, also to play very aggressively and find ways to put pressure on the opponents where they're more likely to make an early mistake. And then if they do make a mistake, that you can often punish them, just attack the king and get a quick win. So that's my tips for how to a, play in the league, uh, events on chess.com, and also how to do as well as possible in the leagues to get the maximum trophies you can in the least amount of time. So that's all for me from this video. Do let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed it so that I can make more of these and perhaps this can even be a nice series given that I am playing quite a bit on chess.com in these sort of leagues to see, well, just how far I can go. And I will see you guys in the next video. Get out of here.